Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arun Srivastava, and I'm a student in the 12th grade who is three months away from graduating. Fun fact, I'm also an idiot because I thought this outfit would be comfortable for a three and a half hour event. Tonight, you shall find me cordial, funny, talented, inspiring, brilliant, and incredibly modest. But catch me on a night where my favorite team has lost, and that version of Aryan will be rude, sarcastic, and frankly, he'll be extremely abusive. Today, I want to talk about you and your infinite selves. Yeah, you heard that right. Infinite selves, plural. Just stay with me here. The idea for the infinite self stems from the concept of sacrifice and transcending beyond what we thought possible. However, rather than focus on an understanding of the infinite self that is spiritual and mystic in nature, I shall also be looking at the infinite self that makes an appearance in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, the idea for the infinite self first came to me when I was out for a walk. The funny thing about this walk was it was a walk to clear my head, not come up with more ideas. And whilst I was on this walk, one very particular thing was running through my head. I was imagining how I would feel when a certain future event took place. And that's when it hit me. My mind was fragmented. And I began to wonder how many others there were that thought the exact same way as me. Surely I couldn't be the only one in the world who would contemplate a future feeling based on an event that may or may not even happen. That's when I realized that to truly be at one with myself, I needed to accept my emotions and have immense discipline. See, the ironic thing is that we truly embrace our infinite self when we are just at one with ourselves. By understanding our own thoughts, our own actions, and our emotions, we're able to feel everything around us in a way that we didn't really think was possible. So I'm here to talk about it, and I know that all of this guidance without context, it feels very empty to all of you. And I know that there's one question running through everybody's head. That's, Aryan, what exactly constitutes of the infinite self? Imagine a puzzle. For our understanding, let's call this a 500-piece puzzle. All right? Our current understanding of the human psyche is that each piece of this puzzle comes together to form one picture. That is you. Does everybody agree with this statement? Each piece comes together to form one picture. Now, I want everybody to hold their hands in front of their face. If I could see everybody in the audience do that. Now, imitate crumpling a ball of paper. Just really crumple it like it's a homework assignment. All right, now throw that ball of paper into the bin. Has everybody thrown it away? Great, I don't want anybody to be left out. What we just threw away was our understanding of the human psyche itself. See, this entire time, we believed that each picture came to uh, each piece came together to form just one picture. But imagine this. Imagine each piece being a picture within itself. I believe that we are truly infinite when we can see each piece as a picture within itself. The laws of physics tell us that a subatomic particle has the ability to borrow energy and move to a faster orbital closer to the nucleus. However, this borrowed energy doesn't stay with the particle for an indefinite period of time. So after a certain point of time, the borrowed energy needs to be given back in just that millisecond, and the particle returns back to its original state. For those of you who didn't understand that, don't worry, I took two weeks to understand this concept as well. But I believe that our growth follows the same basic principles as this subatomic particle. See, we might be inspired by a presidential speech or a movie or a song or, you know, a dumb 12th grade kid giving a TED talk. But the truth is that we can only borrow that inspiration. The infinite self requires an immense amount of discipline. And that doesn't only mean working on yourself, but it means working on your own original ideas. The idea of you and your infinite self is beautiful in theory. It truly is. But it's very hard for one to grasp. If I asked all of you what you think about infinity, you'd imagine something repeating forever. Or you'd imagine Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story. 
But if I asked you what infinity felt like, you wouldn't have a clear definition of what that feeling is. When you start to accept this idea as an intellectual principle, you begin to showcase understanding and you begin to showcase discipline. The infinite self, the one of the most beautiful parts about the infinite self is that it transcends race, religion, and sexuality. It is the many, and mind you, I remember what I'm going to say, and it's going to sound confusing, so please stay with me. It's the many fragmented parts of yourself that come together to create the infinite aspects of your past and present self. And I know that sounds confusing, but if you ponder about this, it will start to make sense to you. The truth about this concept is that it requires an abundant amount of sacrifice. In fact, I believe that sacrifice is one of the paramount qualities required to truly embrace the infinite self. Why is sacrifice important? Because how would you ever come to understand the infinite emotions and responses you have without losing something that you truly care about? See, we all have beliefs that we consider to be sacrosanct. But if we want to embrace our infinite self, these beliefs have to be let go of. And there can never be a point of time where you can say, I'm done. I've completed all of my sacrificing and I'm done working on myself. It doesn't really work like that. See, the infinite self comes into play because it's perpetual. It's a perpetual process that takes place and unfolds within you for as long as you live. Constantly working on yourself and improving is the only way you can maintain that level of achievement. Now, one thing that we really need to focus on is that we need to let go of our definitions of what's good, what's bad, what's high and what's low. But that becomes difficult for us to do because us and our egos and us as humans, we're just obsessed with the idea of my money, my body, my car, my people, my community, that I'm here in this place and I'm in no place else. Of course, that last statement is absolutely true when we discuss it in the most physical sense. But when we start to discuss the dimensions of our consciousness, we move beyond, we transcend beyond the concepts of body, money, and car. However, as I speak to you, I understand that all of us want something different from life. But the truth is, if we keep following what others want, if we keep believing what others want, if we fo exhibit the same be behaviors, the same emotions, then we're going to go where everybody else lets us go. Aren't you tired of thinking and hearing what if? Isn't it time for some action? I mean, the greatest human forces to ever grace us by walking on the same land as we do knew that they didn't have time for what if. They knew that if they didn't have desire, if they didn't have passion, if they didn't take action, then they'd never unlock the key to not just themselves, but the infinite universe beyond us. To conclude, the truth is that I know this talk won't resonate with everybody in the audience. And that's perfectly okay because the reality of the situation is that we're not all in a place in our lives where we can afford to sacrifice. And that's completely fine. But for those of us who choose to take that leap, there are infinite opportunities for us to succeed in fulfilling our goals, and there are infinite opportunities for us to fail. This decision, it's, it's not going to be easy, nor should it be. And it can't be a decision that's forced upon you by somebody else. You have to come to this decision by your own. But if you do choose to go down this path, just know that there are infinite possibilities waiting for you. In the meantime, I should take my leave and tell you that in this ever-expanding universe, I hope that both you and I find our place amongst the infinite nuances that surround us. Thank you.